Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ad Espresso October webinar. I um, just want to check that you can hear us OK and like to know where you're logging on from. So you'll see the little chat box there if you just want to put it in chat there where you're joining us from today. Um, just let you know this session um, is going to be about Google Ads today. So uh, we're delighted to say that we've got one of our uh, friends at Google from the Milan office, Kiara. Uh, she's joining us today, so I'm going to be handing over to her in a moment. Um, but just let you know, a question we get asked all the time on the webinars is, are we recording? Yes, we are recording. So we'll send it out by email um, after this session. If you don't get the email there, then we also upload it to our website. So just go to adespresso.com forward slash webinars. And we'll probably put it on there in a couple of hours, but certainly um, within 24 hours there. Right, so let me go and pass over to Kiara. So I'm just going to uh, make Kiara the presenter here. There we go. Kiara, can you hear us okay? I can hear you, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Um, so we should be seeing your screen, but I'm not sure if we are at the moment. Let's go and see. Uh, let's have a look. We'll be one second, everybody. Just going to hand over. Um, center, there we go. Ah, here we go. Sorry, no, <laughs> getting used to technology there. Okay, That's, you should have control there, Kiara. Brilliant. Perfect. Can you all see my screen? I think it's loading. Yeah, it's loaded up now. Perfect, perfect. So thank you, thank you, Paul. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to, to this webinar on how to master conversion tracking in Google Ads. You can't see me, uh, so just to give you an idea of who I am. Um, my name is Chiara, as you can see here. I work as account manager at Google. Uh, as you can guess from my accent, I'm Italian. Uh, but I'm currently based in Amsterdam and um, I work with Google partners supporting them in delivering advertisers the best solutions and experiences with, uh, with Google Ads. And before joining Google, I've been leading digital marketing at tech startups. Uh, so I've been working quite a lot with conversion tracking, um, with the setup and all the challenges that it can actually uh, have. <laughs> so uh, today uh, we're gonna cover uh, three key points. So first of all, uh, we review the measurement opportunity that help you understand why uh, a correct measurement is so important. And then we will move to conversion tracking. So uh, we will review the benefits of conversion tracking, and then we will move to the uh, core, which is how to implement uh, and master conversion tracking. And we're gonna uh, also see some uh, tips to uh, read uh, reporting. So, uh, First of all, before diving into the session, um, I'd like to spend a few moments reviewing why you should track your conversions. And there are a lot of good reasons, actually, um, but here I've selected four. Uh, so first of all, it will help you to um, see which keywords, which ads, uh, which ad groups and campaigns are actually bringing um, valuable customer activity for your business. And then it will help you understand your uh, your return on investment, and also make helping you make making better informed decisions about your ad spend. And also, it helps you to have a better understanding of your customers. And for example, some of the insights you might get um, are about how they interact with your ads. So maybe you will find out they will be uh, starting; uh, they will click from uh, from one device and then converting on another. And lastly, uh, it also enables you to use um, some advanced strategies, uh, such as smart bidding, uh, which includes maximized conversion, target CPA, and target trust that automatically optimize your campaigns uh, according to your bid business goal, adjusting bids real time for every single auction. So definitely a uh, few good reasons to, to, to use conversion tracking. Um, so let's start from the first point uh, that we had in our agenda, uh, which is about the context of conversion tracking. Uh, and as I said before, uh, measuring conversion in Google Ads helps you to answer a very valid question, which is, is Google Ads bringing value to your business? But you should ask yourself this question with all your marketing investment. Uh, and 
basically whether you are a big or small business, if you run campaigns for your company or if you run them for your clients, uh, measurement should be a priority for you. And leading marketers, marketers across the ecosystem are now recognizing the opportunity uh, made available by leveraging measure, measurement to make sense of the data. And here you can read uh, a quote by the CMO of Unilever, which is basically um, saying how much measurement should be a priority for the industry. And you might think that this applies only to, um, to big businesses or very big companies, but actually that's not the case. Uh, it is extremely important no matter what's the size of your business, no matter what's the size um, of your marketing budget. It's actually, it's more important than ever for any business. And here's another uh, data point for you. Uh, basically, by being data-driven and combining different data sources, you can move your business forward and drive real results. And according to a report uh, by a consultancy, businesses that integrated multiple customer and marketing sources experienced a 2.6 times growth in three years, which is incredible. And if you are investing, in your business, if you're investing in marketing, in ads, you definitely want to understand how your campaigns are performing and how you can get even better results and grow your business. And also, measurement enables you, as we saw, to grow your business by focusing uh, on getting the right and most relevant data, and also helping you understand your media performance uh, not only in Google Ads, but uh, overall, deriving insights from data and then allowing you to uh, take action, putting those insights into use, uh, which is also uh, a way to allocate marketing resources in a better way. And again, this is true for big advertisers, small advertisers, for any business. But we're now finally uh, getting closer to the core of our session today, which is uh, conversion tracking in, in Google Ads. Uh, conversion tracking uh, shows you what happens after a customer interacts with your ads. And we are now going to review how you can use it to better understand and optimize your Google Ads campaigns. Before digging into the concrete steps that you may need to follow um, to implement conversion tracking, I'd like to spend a few uh, minutes on some definition that will help us to start from a common ground and understanding of the key concepts of conversion tracking. There are just three concepts, but it's extremely important that we all agree on them. So, as we said, we are talking about conversion tracking, but we would need to, first of all, agree on what is a conversion. So, a conversion is an action that you want your customers to take when they encounter your marketing message. For example, your online ad. And the most obvious conversion you can think of is probably the purchase of a product, but your business may also need to identify some additional conversions for people who are at different stages of the customer journey. And within your Google Ads campaign, you can set up specific interaction that you would consider to be valuable. And you can then track how many of these valuable interaction your ad campaign is bringing you uh, by setting up conversion tracking. And this is extremely important because without information on how your customers interact with your business, it's extremely difficult to measure success or improve your marketing strategy. And the second tech, uh, term that uh, we're going to use uh, in, in a few minutes is tag. And in order to measure how a customer engages with your site uh, after clicking an ad, you will need to tag your website. Um, and a tag is simply a small snippet of code, so they're just uh, some lines of code uh, that you will need to place on, on your website there, so that when a customer clicks on your ad, that snippet of code will start collecting information about your, uh, their actions on your site and then send them back to your Google Ads account. And you can actually customize how you see the data by telling Google Ads exactly which actions are important uh, for, for your business. 
And last but not least, we will also refer to event tags. And event tag is um, it's very it's very easy to understand. It's very similar to to the the tag we saw before. Uh, it lets you tell the system which uh, customer actions should be measured uh, as a conversion. Uh, for example, it will help you communicate a system that when a user clicks on an ad and then goes to the website, completes a uh, purchase, and of course sees a, a thank you page, for example, then and only then you should consider um, that action as a conversion and not before. We're now ready to uh, review together then how you can uh, take action on this. So how can you implement conversion tracking in, uh, in Google Ads? As seen earlier, uh, conversion tracking shows you what happens after a customer interacts with your ad. So whether they purchase a product, uh, sign up for a newsletter, uh, called your business or even downloaded your app. So let's see practice how conversion tracking works. Uh, in, as you can see here, there are four steps and in this session, we'll go through all these steps together. So as shown in this image, um, conversion tracking starts with you setting up a conversion action in your Google Ads account. And a conversion action, um, as seen, is a specific customer activity that is valuable to your business, such as a purchase or a sign up to a newsletter. At this point, Google Ads will give you a conversion tracking tag or code snippet to add to your website or mobile app code. I know that this may sound intimidating if you are, are not technical, don't have a technical background, but don't worry because it's easier than it sounds. Uh, at this point, when a customer clicks uh, on your ad from um, from your uh, your campaign, so from a Google search ad or display or a video ad, at this point, a temporary cookie is placed on their computer or mobile device, so that when they complete the action um, that they, they was defined, our system recognizes the cookie, and we start recording the conversions. Once you set up conversion tracking, you can then start seeing data on conversions for your campaigns ad groups, ads, and keywords. And actually viewing this data and reviewing them in your reports can help you understand how your advertising helps you achieve important goals for your businesses, such as, again, uh, a sale. So let's begin from the first step, um, which is setting up a conversion action in Google Ads. So this step will actually cover um, the first uh, of the first steps that we've just reviewed. So before you begin, make sure you have everything you need to set up uh, website conversion tracking. You will only need two things, which is uh, a website or a mobile app if you're using an app. And that is where you will put the conversion tracking code and then the ability uh, to edit that website or the mobile app. So either you or your webmaster will need to be able to add the tag to the website or the mobile app. So at this point, we are ready to, um, to start creating our conversion. So to create your conversion, all you need to do is, first of all, signing in uh, to your Google Ads account. And then in the upper right corner, you will see uh, an icon called uh, Tools and Settings. Uh, you just need to click it, then select Measurement and Conversions. If you're new to conversion tracking, you will see a page like the one in this in the screen shown on the screen. Otherwise, you will see the conversion you already created. Even if you have a conversion, if not, never mind. Uh, all you need to do is anyway click on the plus conversions uh, button. At this point, you're going to see the screen, uh, so you will have to choose a conversion action you want to create. So each conversion you want to track has a different set of process. Um, so the first step in setting up conversion tracking is actually choosing a conversion source, that is where the conversions will come from. And we have four options. So the first conversion source that we see here is website. And with this option, you are tracking completed customer actions on your website. For example, purchase or newsletter sign up. The second conversion source that we find we see is app. And with this option, you are tracking completed customer actions on your app, such as uh, an app install or an app action like a purchase. The third conversion 
uh, source is phone calls, uh, which allows you to track customer calls generated from your number in your ads on your website or a click on your mobile website. And the last conversion source is import. And in this case, what you are tracking is when an ad click leads to a conversion in the offline world, for example, a sale in your store. And remember, before uh, setting up conversion tracking of any kind, you first need to figure out what source you want to track. Sometimes the selection is very straightforward, but sometimes it's not. And as a tip, um, always identify what activity is that you want to track, uh, which is not necessarily where the activity was initiated. And once you have a clear idea of that, uh, you will have a very appropriate source. For the sake of time, in this session, we are going to focus on two sources, uh, website and phone calls, as they apply to most businesses. However, even if your conversion source is different, stay tuned, uh, as I strongly recommend everyone to get familiar with the process and see how easy it is. And also, in the meantime, we're going to share some tips um, to set up uh, other sources and to read uh, your conversion reports. So, we are now going to review the steps to create a conversion action when the website is the source of your conversion. And this will help you see how effectively your ad clicks lead to a valuable customer activity on your website. Again, such a purchase, sign up, or a form submission. So to do so, uh, we start by selecting website. And then we will need to provide some information on the conversion action we would like to create. As an example, we will take sales as a priority. Therefore, we're going to choose purchase as category. And then we will give the conversion a name. In this case, I haven't been very original, so I just typed purchase. Next to conversion name, make sure you enter a name for the conversion you'd like to track. And make sure that this name is easy to recognize for you, because this will appear in your conversion report. So it's important that you will be able always to understand uh, which conversion it's coming from. If you scroll down, you will then have to uh, enter a specific value and, uh, and count setting. Uh, next to value, you can select how to track the value of each conversion. And at this point, you're going to have three options. If you select use the same value for each conversion, you will just need to enter the amount each conversion is worth to your business. The second option is to use different values for each conversion. And you can use this option, for example, if you're tracking purchases of products with different prices. Make sure that uh, if you, when you add your conversion tracking tag, uh, you pay attention because you need to customize your tag to track transaction specific values. So um, this requires a little extra setup. As an alternative, if you don't want to enter a value because uh, that specific action doesn't have a specific value for your business or you're not sure about it, you can uh, just select uh, don't use a value. Then with, uh, with count, you're telling Google Ads how to count these conversions. And there are basically two, two easy options. Um, every is uh, recommended when, uh, when well, every, every action um, is taken as valuable for your business. They're adding value for your business. Um, and so N1, yeah, is when only the first, uh, the first interaction is valuable for your business. So usually every is recommended for purchases, while one is recommended for leads. You then have the option to select, um, to set up four other, um, other elements. The first one is a conversion window, uh, which helps you to uh, select how long you want to track conversions after and add interaction from um, a drop down menu. And the window can be from one to 90 days. Uh, by default, it's 30 days. So in this case, we're not going to change it. The other option you have is view through conversion window. Uh, view through conversions are those conversions that happen when your customers see but don't interact with your ad. So, for example, they don't click on your ad, but then they complete a conversion on your site. So it's not um, related to a direct interaction with your ad, but it's related to the conversion after. So you can select how long to track view through conversion, again, from a drop down menu. 
and the window can be uh, from one to 30 days. The third option is that uh, including conversion. Uh, this setting is selected by default and lets you decide whether or not you want to include data for this conversion action in your conversion reporting column. If you uncheck this setting, data will still be included in your conversion column. If you are a little bit confused by this, don't worry, uh, we will have time later to um, review the differences uh, more in detail. As a tip, you might want to uncheck this setting if you're using smart bidding and you don't want to include this particular conversion action in your bid strategy. Last point is the attribution model. Uh, we will see soon review all the available options. Um, as by default, it's set to last click, uh, but we strongly recommend you to select time decay or position based. And we are going to soon review um, what's the difference. At this point, you just need to say to click on create and continue. And we're done with the first step of our uh, conversion action creation. If you're um, Actually, you want to track phone calls as conversion if they're essential to your business. You can use conversion tracking to help you see how effectively your ad click leads to a different kind of phone calls. And to track calls to a number on the website, Google provides your business with a unique phone number that helps you identify and measure calls that users have made from your site after clicking on your ad. And this dynamically created Google forwarding number replaces the number, um, the business phone uh, on your site for the users uh, without any cost to you. So this means that when someone visits your website after clicking one of your ads and then calls your business using the Google forwarding number on the website, you can identify and measure those calls using website uh, conversion tracking. You can see detailed reports and even better, you can tell which specific keywords, ads or ad groups uh, led to those call conversions. So if phone calls is the conversion source for you, all you need to do is uh, selecting phone calls. And then you will need to specify uh, that the source of the phone call uh, is, um, for example, a call to a phone number on the website. That's what the, the example that we're going to use here. So you just need to select that option. Uh, click continue and then you will see a form which is quite similar to the one we saw before so you will have to enter uh, to give the conversion a name uh, so that you can recognize it uh, again make sure you add a name that it will be easier to recognize for you later um, so in this case we use uh, phone calls similarly as before you will have to select a category which will um, identify which kind of category uh, of conversion this, uh, this conversion is uh, so you will actually able, be, will, you will be able to segment your conversion later in your reporting. Uh, in this case, we will consider the call uh, as a lead. Then you have value as before. Again, you can enter a value for each call, or you can select don't use a value if you if you prefer not to count one. Uh, for, for phone calls, often we don't use a value. But of course, it always depends on your specific case. If we scroll down, then we uh, again have the count setting as before, uh, which helps you to select how to count uh, these conversions. In this example, we are selecting uh, one, which is uh, the best, uh, the setting which is best for leads. Um, then you have to uh, enter a minimum length that a call needs to last to be counted uh, as a conversion. And in this case, uh, we're gonna uh, choose 60 seconds. As before, we have uh, the conversion window setting. So uh, this is the conversion window for the conversion action, which can be as short as one week or as long as 60 days. It all depends on, the, on your business. Uh, and again, uh, we have a more advanced option, which is including conversions. Uh, by default uh, is uh, selected. Uh, and opting in into this setting will include data for this conversion action in your conversions reporting column. If you uncheck this setting, data will still be included in the old conversion column. Uh, and as earlier, we can uh, again select here uh, an attribution model. So we can just click on create and continue. And we will be able to uh, move in this case to the, uh, the second step. Uh, 
basically to set up the conversion tracking for the first time, you will need to add two um, snippets of code to your website. Uh, again, don't worry, it's very easy. Um, the two pieces that you need to add are the global site tag and the full snippet. So after you create a conversion action, all you need to do is enter in a phone number and then Google Ads will create a short, um, short piece of code that you can add to your web page so that the call can be tracked. You can download this uh, snippet well, to your web page following the instruction that uh, you can see uh, here. So also important tip, don't forget to add a call extension to your campaigns if you're using uh, this kind of conversion, conversion action. As we saw, uh, both for conversions coming from the website and for phone calls, one of the setup options requires you to select an appropriate attribution model. Again, it may sound complicated and you may not be totally familiar with that, um, but it's actually very easy to understand. And an example I really like is the holiday <laughs> example. Uh, probably at some point we have all taken a holiday, uh, but have you ever really booked a holiday uh, in one sitting on one device? Uh, it's more likely that you look for ideas on different locations, hotels, maybe you read some reviews, uh, maybe watch a few videos on YouTube, and then you probably booked your holiday after a few days. So if we try to design our holiday booking journey, it may look a little bit like this with several steps and devices involved. And currently what we see is that still many advertisers are looking just at the final touch point before the conversion, which is what happened on, in this case on the Thursday morning. And this means that they're basically losing uh, valuable insights on the table uh, and if we only value the last touch before the conversion we are missing the full picture and therefore it's critical that you look at the entire journey because valuable insights emerge when you begin to start looking beyond the final touch point and with attribution you can help connecting all these pieces and understand have a really good understanding of the full picture so Let's have a look uh, at another example to make it even more clear. Uh, in this slide, we can see a recap of different steps that um, took to win an Olympic, uh, an Olympic medal. Uh, and all, this, all these steps, actually, we can say that they all play a role in the victory. But if we, when we select an attribution model, we are basically telling the system to identify which steps should be considered more relevant. And as we can imagine, we cannot attribute uh, the Olympic goal just with a protein shake before the big race, which is what we're doing when we select uh, last click as attribution model. Uh, this is a very uh, wide topic, uh, but just to give you um, a, a brief overview, uh, whenever possible, uh, we always recommend using data-driven attribution model, but it's just available for uh, advertisers with a lot of uh, clicks and conversions. Um, therefore, for smaller advertisers, there are uh, three options which are, uh, help you to move beyond last click and first click, um, which are time decay, linear, and position based. Um, we actually recommend you uh, start trying testing uh, time decay or position based uh, to give you a better understanding of what uh, what this uh, what this means. Uh, the time decay uh, time decay model is the closest model to last click and uh, conversion credit is distributed according to the freshness of the click and in this case um, you can see that the click on the desktop receives more credit than the first click on mobile but we're still considering the entire journey so we're just we're not focusing just on the last piece and the second model that we recommend is the position based and this model gives more credit to the user first and last click which is, if we think about the example before, we are basically giving more credit to having joined um, a junior track team and having uh, taken the shake. But still, we consider the, what also what, ha what was happening uh, in between. So we, we still consider all the touch points. At this point, we are now ready to uh, move on on how you can actually set up the conversion tracking tag. So, uh, to the second step and the third step uh, of the framework that we used before. So I know that this may sound a little bit more of a the, the technical part of the uh, of the session, 
but again if it's not that complicated so even if you're uh, not a developer you will totally uh, be able to to do this so at this point uh, both for website conversion action and phone calls you will uh, you will need to set up a tag and you have three options to choose from you can install the tag yourself by adding a snippet of code to your website or you can email the tag to your webmasters within all the instructions or you can use google tag manager and today we are going to review uh, the first and the last options so as we've seen the first option is uh, installing the global site tag and the event snippet yourself the global site tag adds website visitors to your old visitor marketing list if you set up your marketing and sets new cookies uh, on your domain, which will store information about the ad click that brought someone to your site. And you have to install the global site tag uh, on every page of your website, but you only need one global site tag for each Google Ads account. And the event snippet will track the action that should be counted as conversion. So you will uh, have to install this snippet on the pages where you would like to track conversions for. So each to sum up, each conversion uh, action has its own associated event snippet, whereas the global site tag is the same across all conversion actions within a Google Ads account. So install the tag uh, yourself. It's actually uh, very easy. Uh, first of all, you will need to check if you have already installed the global site tag on your website or not. Uh, you can actually uh, see the global site tag for um, for your account on um, on this page. So you can just check if it's already uh, in the code or not. If you're not sure, uh, it's actually very, very quick to, to check. So make sure you uh, you check it so that you can then select uh, the most appropriate, um, the most appropriate um, um, option for your for your specific case and you can follow the appropriate instructions. So if it's the, the first time that you um, set up the tag for a conversion action in your account and you haven't installed the global site tag from another Google product, you can select, uh, I haven't installed the global site tag on my website. And this option will show you um, the full global site tag. Here you can see an example of what it looks like. Um, and to install the tag, you just need to copy this tag code and paste it uh, between the head tags of every page of your website. Uh, you only need to do it once, so it makes it a little uh, time to do so, but you only need to do it once, so uh, it's, and it's actually quite uh, quite quick. If the global site tag is already installed on all the pages of the website, but it's coming from another Google product, such as, for example, Google Analytics or another Google Ads account, you will need to copy uh, the line of code uh, with a config command which is the piece of code that contains your conversion ID. And this you have to, um, to, to do it for every instance of the global site tag right above uh, the script pen tag. So again, it's just uh, a matter of copying and pasting this, uh, this short line of code. If the global site tag uh, is already installed uh, on, uh, on your website, uh, you don't really need to um, to add the global site tag again to your website because, as we've seen, you only need to add it once. But uh, just make sure that uh, it appears on every page of your site and confirm that uh, the config command in each instance of the tag contains your account conversion ID. And you will see your conversion ID um, when you select this option. Scrolling down, you will see uh, the event snippet section. So next to event snippet, you need to select whether you want to track conversion on a page load or uh, on a click. Uh, page load uh, basically counts conversion when customers visit the conversion page, such as a confirmation page for a purchase. And this is the default and most common option. Uh, while click counts conversions when customers click uh, a button or uh, a link, for example, a buy now button. The event code snippets for each uh, of those uh, of these look a little different, but the process of getting the tag and implementing it is actually the same. 
So you, what you need to do is copy this uh, event snippet and just add it uh, to your website or uh, click download snippet to add it to your website later. If you're uh, tracking conversion by page load, all you need to do is adding the event snippet to the page you're tracking. If you're tracking the conversion by click, then you need to add the event snippet to the page that has the button or link you'd like to track for clicks. At this point, you only need to, um, to select uh, next and you're, uh, you're done. So basically, this is the whole process um, for set up um, conversion actions for websites uh, and phone calls if you're installing uh, the tag yourself. As you've seen before, there's another option, uh, which is using uh, Google Tag Manager. <coughs> so let's see how to proceed uh, if you're using Google Tag Manager. Well, first of all, uh, Google Tag Manager um, is a tool that allows you to quickly and easily update tags and code snippets uh, on your website. And you can use it, you can use it uh, also to install your conversion tracking tag. And it's actually very um, quick uh, and extremely easy. So uh, all you need to do is at this point, you're gonna see, as you can see here, there's a conversion ID and conversion label uh, shown on the screen. So all you need to do is, um, is copying them. And uh, at this point, you can, we can move to uh, Google Tag Manager. So uh, from the Google Tag Manager overview, uh, all we need to do is uh, selecting new tag uh, from the menu, as you can see here. And then we will be asked to configure the tag. Uh, it's a very easy process, very quick. So under tag configuration, you just need to select Google Ads conversion tracking. And then at this point, remember that conversion ID and conversion label that we saw on Google Ads when setting up the conversion action, then it's time to use them. So you will just need to copy and paste the conversion ID and conversion label that we created on Google Ads, and then add uh, other relevant values that we want to add to configure the tag. Once completed the steps, uh, with the steps, sorry, we move to the triggering part uh, to select when we want to, um, to tag uh, this trigger. So again, we have different options. Uh, as it is uh, quite common uh, in this example, uh, I'll configure the trigger as if uh, I want the event to trigger when the user lands uh, on a thank you page. So to do so uh, in the section page view, I select again, uh, page view. And then I will be asked to um, provide some uh, very, very quick and easy configuration. So we'll select some page views. And then um, I will identify, we'll give some information when I want this, uh, how I identify this page. So I uh, will select page URL, contains, and then I'll type thank you uh, .html, which is the address uh, where my, uh, my thank you page is. Again, uh, we are invited to give a name to our trigger. Um, so make sure, again, that you're giving uh, a name that it's easy for you to recognize later uh, in a second moment. At this point, all we need to do is uh, save and publish. At this point, uh, to make sure uh, that you're tracking properly conversion on all browsers, you just need to make sure that you add a conversion linker tag and configure it to fire on all your web pages. It may be uh, already um, in your tags. If not, it's very easy to, um, to implement and we're gonna do it now together. So first of all, again, uh, all you need to do is go into the Tag Manager Overview page, select Tags, uh, select the new tag. Uh, and at this point, you will need to click uh, to edit the tag configuration. From the menu, uh, the tag type, selecting conversion linker. At this point, uh, edit uh, the triggering. Select all pages. Then you need to do save and publish. At this point, you're tracking all the conversion and it's uh, the correct setup on your the, on on all the website. So at this point, basically we are we're done. So uh, we have set up uh, we have created our action. Uh, we set up our tag, and we are ready uh, to start tracking conversions. 
remember that you can always edit the conversion action that you created at any time. A quick tip, if you're not uh, extremely familiar and you want to make sure that your Google tag uh, is working, you can use a tool which is called the Google Tag Assistant, uh, which is a plugin for, uh, for Google Chrome, which uh, help you to, um, to make sure that you, are, you verify that your tag is working. So all you need to do is enable the extension and then refresh the page. If implemented correctly, the event tag will appear as Google Ads Conversion Tracking and will show a conversion label when you click on it uh, in the Google Tag Assistant. At this point, uh, hopefully you'll be uh, tracking a lot of conversions. Um, and so you will start collecting data and information. And this will give you a lot of insights uh, on your business, as we've seen, uh, on your customers. So having a full understanding of how to turn those data into insights and then into action uh, actually requires a lot of time and experience. Um, but I would like to share some tips with you so that you can um, already start um, reviewing and getting insights from your data. So to review our framework from one last time, uh, we are now focusing on the last point, which is what happens when we are sending our data uh, back to Google Ads. So this is what we've seen before when I was uh, talking about conversion, all conversions uh, in the, our um, conversion action setup. And this is a question that uh, actually comes often quite often when evaluating conversions. And it's about the difference between conversion and all conversion. You will see these two columns in your Google Ads front end, uh, in your uh, overview of your campaign, for example, and you will, may see different numbers. So for example, you may see 10 in the conversion column and 15 in the all conversion column and wonder why there's this difference and how you can actually you read this data. And actually this is very easy. Uh, conversion includes only conversion data from conversion actions uh, with the setting uh, on yes in the including conversion section in the conversion action setup. So if you remember before when we are setting up the conversion, there was this option including conversion, which by default is set to yes. So that's what, what we are talking about. Um, and the all conversion actually includes all conversions in the account, including cross device conversions and conversion actions, which are not included in the conversion column. So it is actually normal um, to see more conversions in the all conversion column than in the conversion one. Uh, this tip will actually help you to avoid a pitfall that often tricks even the most experienced advertisers, and it's about view through conversions for uh, display uh, and video campaigns. Uh, view through conversion uh, is a column uh, in your reporting and your Google Ad front end, which is telling you when customers see but don't interact with your ad, and then later completes a conversion on your site. And this is different from the data in your other conversion columns, which records when customers interact with an ad and then complete a conversion on your site. So view through conversion are a very helpful way uh, to track the value uh, of your display or video ads campaigns. So what's important here is that view through conversion take into account the settings of your conversion actions, such as the way conversions are counted. And in the settings section of your conversion action, you can enable or disable uh, this option uh, to include view through conversion from display and video ads in your all conversion column. So uh, in a very practical way, if you have this uh, setting um, checked, uh, by default it is, you will see all your this view through conversion in the all uh, conversion column. So you will likely see uh, a much higher uh, number of conversion uh, than in the conversion column. Uh, but make sure that you know that this option can be also unchecked. And here I would like to uh, share with you two final tips for performance evaluation. Uh, first of all, uh, whenever uh, you are uh, trying to learn more about conversion, about uh, your customers, uh, try to focus uh, on the conversion column and use segments to understand how performance changes across device or time. For example, if, you, if your conversions are coming from mobile, 
you may want to make sure that your website is also easy accessible from mobile, uh, the user experience is good, uh, the speed is, uh, is right, uh, and make sure that the, for the, the, your client has a good experience. And the second tip is avoid looking at the most res recent days. Um, conversion often take a few days to happen. As we have seen, uh, it's less and less likely uh, that users converse in one single session from one device. And therefore, if you only focus on the most recent days, you may miss some conversions in your analysis. And of course, you want to make sure that your analysis is um, as uh, comprehensive as possible. So this uh, session is uh, now coming to an end. Uh, but before leaving, I would like to recap with you why conversion tracking is uh, actually so important for your business. So as we've seen we co with conversion tracking, we can actually have a really good understanding of uh, which keywords, ads, ad groups, campaigns drive the best um, value for your business. You can understand if your return on investment, so you can make better decisions about uh, how you spend um, your, 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 your money on Google Ads. Uh, or any other platform. Um, it can help you to get better understanding of your customer base, of your uh, of your audience, so you can learn more about also how um, on how they interact with your ads. And then they will enable you to uh, use marketing strategies such as maximize conversion, target CPA, or target trust that will automatically optimize your campaign uh, uh, and yeah, according to to your business goals. So uh, I will. I also collected some resources with you. Um, so you will find some uh, free online training, uh, which includes also modules on conversion tracking, measurement, and attribution. If you want to learn more, um, this is our new platform called Skillshop. Um, also, you will find a link to uh, our support page where you can find step-by-step -step instruction uh, on how to set up conversion tracking. And there's, uh, if you rather watch a video. Uh, there's also a very useful video tutorial um, on how to implement conversion tracking in Google Ads. So thank you for, for your time. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I hope this session will help you uh, to have a lot of conversion and bring even more uh, value to your business. Hi, Kiara. That's, that's been an amazing session. Thanks for joining us today. And we were uh, just discussing with Tori and the rest of the Ad Espresso team that 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 is like yeah i think you've created like the uh the go-to guide for conversion tracking there and some really just the, the actionable guide of going through the steps so just going to wrap up our session today i'm just going to um just going to share my screen here for a second uh just to to give people a, a recap here um the question that we get asked during the session is are we recording because there's a lot of information to take in there and yes we are so um we'll transfer that out to everybody by email also and within a couple of hours, it's usually on our website at adespresso.com forward slash webinars. And you can also go onto our YouTube channel. If you search for Adespresso on there, we'll put the recording and then you can review the information there and pause it as you wish there. I'd um, just like to thank everybody for joining us. And so we've got a little um, exclusive offer here just for webinar viewers. If it's like a free 14 day trial of Adespresso and 30% off, then you can go to adespresso.com forward slash AE um, hyphen webinar there and you can take advantage of that free trial. We've got a really good Google Ads integration. Uh, we've been working closely with Kiara and the rest of the Google Ads team. Um, very, very simple graphical interface. So if you're starting with just starting off with Google Ads, uh, great way to get um, get up to speed with them. Also, we've got a good split testing tool for Google Ads so that you can really cut down your costs and really nice uh, PDF reporting. So even if you're an agency and you um, go and produce uh, reports, um, one thing that, you know, the Google interface may be not quite so good sometime reporting. We've got, we've really excelled in that in our espresso. So take out a trial there. Also, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help, um, I know sometimes that there's a lot to take in and you just want an expert to go and review your campaigns or have like a one-to-one -one coaching session or even get somebody to run your ads that we can do that for you within Ad Espresso. Um, so if you'd like to take advantage of that and speak to one of our uh, Google Ads experts, they work with Google Ads 
day in, day out there. They they process millions of dollars of ad spend. Then that can be booked in the services tab in Ad Espresso. And of course, as we've seen, if you're not like a, a customer yet, then you can take out that free trial there. But that's certainly we're trying to not just be a, a, a piece of software. We actually want to help you all the every step of the way with your Facebook and Google ads there. And then lastly for today, uh, looking ahead to our November webinar, we're going to be changing gears and moving away from the kind of the more technical subjects. So we're going to be looking at the ad creation side of things. So we're going to be looking at how to create high converting Facebook ads. And um, we're going to welcome back Anna. She was very popular last time she was on our webinar. She's one of the senior blog writers at Ad Espresso, and we'll be running through how to create good ad copies, so your headlines and your ad text. And then my colleague Braden, he's on the Hootsuite social media team, and Braden covers um, more of the graphic size, how to create good um, content for uh, both newsfeed ads and also for Instagram stories ads. So um, look ahead there to our November webinar. If you'd like to register for that, just go to adespresso.com forward slash webinars, and that's where you're going to find the replay of today. So thank you for everybody for joining us today. Thank you for your positive comments. Um, if you have got any questions afterwards, you can always drop me an email at paulaadespresso.com or you can go and tweet us at adespresso. So thank you, thank you everybody for taking the time today and thank you, Kiara. Thank you.